there is a massive change coming to Azure and I can't believe no one is talking about it. I was really shocked when I found this out and how it literally impacts every Azure customer. It all started when I opened my email one day and I saw this. Now Azure is 16 years old and all that time you've had default outbound access to the internet without having to do anything extra. Now this of course has been very convenient, but it's actually a huge problem. Now when I first heard that Microsoft was taking this access away, I had a few questions. How is nobody talking about this? Why is Microsoft making this change now? And what's the best practice for how we should make this change and avoid any downtime as fast as possible? Now the reason I think nobody's talking about this is actually, it's not a new announcement. Now I know I said I just got an email. That's because I get the Azure Service Health Advisory updates. You can find that here in the Azure portal, search at the top for Service Health, then go to Health Advisories and you'll see right here this retirement notice. We all need to transition to a new method for outbound internet access. And you can see that this change will impact every Azure region in the world. Now this change was actually announced back in 2023 in this blog. And I think that's kind of why nobody paid attention. 2023 was a lifetime ago and default outbound internet access isn't actually going away until September 30th, 2025. What'd I tell you? Hmm? Nothing to worry about. But after 16 years, why is Microsoft doing this now? Well, there's actually three big reasons. Zero trust security principles recommend against having a virtual network open to the internet by default. And your connectivity should be explicit, not implicit, meaning that you should only grant it where it's required. And that'll reduce any kind of network impact on you. And the default outbound IPs will change over time. So anything you have that's dependent on it is going to change eventually and you're gonna have a problem. And this change will actually solve all three of these issues. So let's say you have a computer on a subnet on a network. Even if you don't have a public IP address attached to that VM, when you open a web browser, you can get right out no problem. And you can go to a website like whatismyip.com and see what your public IP address is. And all of this works because of something called Secure Network Address Translation, or SNAC. All network connections need a few things in common, like a source IP and a port, a destination IP and a port, and a protocol that they communicate on. But when you send traffic over the public internet, you can't use your own private IP address as the source. That's because IPs like this are not routable over the internet. They belong to a group of IPs that were set up in the RFC 1918. And that's these different ranges here, which is almost 18 million IPs. But because they're all private and non-routable, when you send traffic over the internet, SNAT steps in, converts your private IP source to your public IP address as the source, and everything's good to go. So let me show you how the future of Azure is going to look. We've jumped ahead to 2025, default outbound access is now completely gone, and when you RDP or Bastion into a VM, when you look at the system tray, there's no network connection. When you go to the settings app, Windows is no longer activated and Windows Update does not work. And when you open your web browser, you can't go anywhere. So if that's how everything's gonna be going forward, how do we fix that today? Well, you can prepare for this future by using private subnets. This is a new preview feature that lets you build secure subnets without outbound internet access today. And if you do need access out to the internet, it can be easily enabled, which I'll show you in a second. But there are some limitations that you need to know about. Today, services like Windows Activation and Windows Update, and even subnet delegation, where this subnet is for your key vaults or for Azure storage, that's not gonna work today. And if you use any user-defined routes with the zero route, which is where we send all other traffic that we don't know where it's going, which usually means the internet, and you route that to a firewall, any traffic that's gonna bypass that UDR like service tags, and that's gonna break in a private subnet. And toughest of all, as of right now, none of your existing subnets can be converted into private subnets. Now, all of these limitations are gonna be addressed soon, so stay tuned for more. To enable a private subnet, go to one of your virtual networks and let's build a new subnet, give it a name, specify your address space, and then scroll down and check the box right there. 
then click add at the bottom. Now with a secure subnet, how exactly do you grant access out to the internet when you need it? Well, you've actually got multiple options. And this blog goes into a lot of details to help you land on the best solution for your use case. Now first, you could attach a public IP address directly to your VM. And that might be good for a quick test, but I do not recommend this option in almost every case. That would open your VM to inbound and outbound access from the internet, which is far too great in an attack surface without some other resources for protection. So a better option is one that a lot of you are using already, a firewall. Now, of course, that's a security appliance, and one of the ways it secures things is by managing your internet traffic, inbound and outbound. But the downsides here are it's higher cost and the way it manages your outbound ports. See, you're limited to 2,496 SNAT ports for every public IP address that's attached to your firewall. And I know firewalls can go up to 250 IPs. And since a lot of you use firewalls, I'll show you a better way that you can still use your firewalls going forward. But another way that you could do it is with an Azure Load Balancer configured with outbound rules. It's a lot lower cost than a firewall, but the downside here is it doesn't really scale well. You can only manage VMs that are in your backend pool for a start, and all of those SNAT ports will need to be pre-allocated, which means a lot more management, and this often leads to port exhaustion, where you simply run out of ports. So the best practice in general to have the same experience that you have today with default outbound access is to use the Azure NAT gateway. This is a highly available and resilient zero trust network security model appliance that takes care of all of the outbound internet access for you. And it only allows response packets to come back. There's no direct inbound traffic, period. And one gateway can be attached up to 800 subnets in a single virtual network. And you can have up to 16 public IP addresses, each one with 64,000 ports which is over a million ports and 400,000 more ports than your firewall. And that combined with session limits completely avoids snap port exhaustion. Now, before I show you how to set this up, I wanna talk quickly to my Windows 365 admins. Anyone who's using the business side or enterprise with the Microsoft hosted network, all of this is gonna be taken care of for you as just part of the service. That way you can focus on your other workloads like Win365 Enterprise using Azure Network Connections or your VNets for Azure Virtual Desktop, AKS, VMs, VM scale sets, etc. Here in the Azure portal, search at the top for a NAT gateway. Click and build a new one, pick your subscription and resource group, give it a name and then select your region. For the availability options, this isn't so much for high availability of the NAT gateway, that's all just part of the service and it takes care of itself. This is for you to specify if your availability zones need to be highly available for their internet outbound traffic. Putting a separate gateway in each zone not only limits the traffic between the zones, but if any single zone has a problem, the others can just keep on working. Now, if you choose the no zone option, then one will just be selected for you on the back end. It'll actually be hidden and you can't actually control it or change it. So it's better to be more explicit if you need to. Now the idle timeouts, this is how long the network flow will remain open. And at the end of that timeout, the session will be closed. The snap ports will be returned back to the pool and you avoid snap port exhaustion. So any new traffic initiated after that will be considered a new session. So click next. And this is where you can pick your public IP address. You can use a single one, or if you need more than 64,000 ports, which I know does sound like a lot, but a single internet connection can use a lot of ports depending on what you're doing. So if you need more, you can select a public IP address prefix. This gives you up to 16 public IP addresses per scale. On the next screen, you associate your NAT gateway with your virtual network from the dropdown, and then you check the boxes for what subnets need internet access. Click next. Add the tags like you do for all your deployments and then create. And if you want to learn more about how you master the cloud, you should check out my new book now available on Amazon, the ultimate Azure IaaS infrastructure management guide linked right here and in the video description below. Now here's that same VM that we built in our private subnet earlier. Now with the NAT gateway attached, the web browser connects to the internet automatically. 
and we've got a public IP address that's from the NAT Gateway pool. Windows Update simply works and Windows is activated. Now let's think a little more about your firewalls with NAT Gateway. Now most of you use a hub and spoke network topology like this, and that means you almost always put your firewall in the hub network on a dedicated subnet, just like that. And you would also need a user-defined route that connects your subnets over in the spoke and sends that traffic over to the firewall. Now here in my spoke, all of my subnets are private with no outbound internet access, and the firewall policies are rules that all allow my VM to get out to the internet. So today, everything's just fine. But once you have to reroute all of your outbound internet traffic from everywhere through this one firewall, you could run into SNAP port exhaustion. So to solve this, just build a NAT gateway in the same region, and then go to your firewall subnet, and from the dropdown here, select your NAT gateway, and click Save. Over in the NAT gateway, we can see our public IP address, and if I jump back to the VM, over on the left, we had the firewall's public IP. And now on the right, you can see the traffic is going through my new NAT gateway. So I avoid snap port exhaustion while still benefiting from all of the rules, logging, and management of my firewall. So now that you know how to set up yourself for the future of what Azure should look like, you're gonna wanna watch this video and take care of a few things right now. And happy learning.